Hey guys! So, today I know it's a little weird camera angle thing going on here, um, but basically I thought I'd do something a little different. Um, I'm actually on my way to the hospital. Don't freak out. Nothing major. Well, not yet anyway. Oh, my arm. Um, so basically what's going on is I'm going to have a laparoscopy. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that's pretty much keyhole surgery where they cut you open um, in your belly button and usually uh, you know one side or both sides of your pelvis to stick a little camera in um, and have a look around. I've got suspected endometriosis which is where I don't know how to describe it. Basically it's your period gets into your body um, like it bleeds outside of the uterus um, for lack of better description I suppose. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to have surgery on Monday um, and I thought I'd share my experience with you guys in case maybe you're up for a similar procedure and you want to know what's going on or you just want to know what's going on or how they do it. Um, so yeah, I thought let me around for the next week. Um, so pretty much what's happening today is I am off to the hospital for a pre-admission pre pre-admission um, What's it called? Pre-admission appointment um, to kind of talk about what's going to happen in the surgery, uh, what time I need to fast because obviously I'm going to have to go in with an empty stomach, without any water in my stomach, any food in my stomach. So I think I'll be fasting from midnight Sunday. Um, I'll be going into the hospital at 7 o'clock. On Monday morning um, yes yeah, so not allowed to eat any food or drink any water no. but yeah I'll, I'll kind of explain more after I've had my appointment so we can touch base together but I thought you know I'd just explain each day how I'm feeling and what's going on um, I can show you what my stomach looks like afterwards if you like because um, I know I've asked a lot of people who have gone through this same procedure and what happens with them and all of that kind of stuff and you might not know anyone so by getting my experience and what's going on with me you'll know what you're up for um, because I've actually had two of my best friends go under the same procedure luckily enough they didn't have any endometriosis um, but pretty much with endometriosis they don't they can't tell um, if you have it or not without actually cutting you open and having a look. I know it sounds nasty, kind of is, but I've had pelvic scans and stuff and they can't see anything because the endometriosis sticks to tissue. It just looks like normal tissue. It's not going to show up on any scan. So they have to stick the scope in and have a little look around. Um, from what I know, I know I'm, I'm, I know I'm not going to be awake, I'm going to be out to it, so that's pretty much what today is going to be about. I'm going to go in and see if I'm, you know, well enough, fit enough to be able to go under anaesthetic, that they'll be able to wake me up and that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, just, just walk me through the procedure really. Um, the only thing I'm really freaking out about is that they're going to stick a friggin' thing into my shoulder and pump my stomach full of gas so I'm gonna have this big bloated gassy belly and a sore shoulder and all of that kind of stuff but I'm just about to have lunch um, and then I'm gonna jump in the car and head off to the hospital so I'll talk to you guys this afternoon ah! good morning it's Monday and it's 10 to 6 <laughs> um, we're about to head off to the hospital. Today's the day of the surgery. Uh, excuse me. No. Um, yeah, so I realized I didn't talk to you after 
after the pre-admission appointment on Friday. But basically all we did was just, um, you know, made sure that I was fit and healthy for the procedure. You know, they took my height and weight and asked me about my medical history and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I also... Oh, uncomfortable. I also spoke with the anaesthetist um, because I get indigestion. So you have to be really honest about um, any illnesses or any problems that you have. Um, and basically the problem that they would have had with the indigestion is um, that essentially <laughs> you could burn up and like vomit while you're under, under the general anaesthetic. Um, so she just made sure that I had some medication to take for that. And yeah, that's pretty much all the pre-admission was about. I realized I didn't tell you um, what it was, you know, that I was suffering from and why I was having this procedure in the first place. So I got my first period when I was 11 um, and they were very, very heavy um, and excruciatingly painful and I was just sick all the time from them um, until about the age of 15, 16 and then once I got to that age I stopped getting my periods at all but I'd still feel really sick and get horrible cramping and pelvic pain um, all of that kind of stuff um, so yeah they're just gonna cut me open and have a look see um, if there's any you know endometriosis inside of me and what endometriosis is I don't think I've said this either is where you don't shed your lining properly it can go flow out of your fallopian tubes and inside of your body instead of out of your vagina like it normally would. Sorry if there's boys watching this. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically it um, goes into your body and fuses, you know, onto either the outside of your uterus or on your fallopian tubes or your ovaries, but it can also um, fuse to other parts other organs inside of you like your bowel your bladder that kind of thing and it forms like a scar tissue um, and basically it can you know make you infertile because your ovaries don't move properly which doesn't release the eggs properly and all of that kind of stuff and it causes a lot of pain um, so yeah the only way they can know is by cutting you open and having a look because it doesn't show up on scans so that's what we're doing today. Um, Josh has kindly taken the day off work to take me to and from the hospital. Um, I'm, the, the basics of it, I suppose, is that I'm going, I need to be there by seven o'clock. And then I imagine I would have uh, all the tests and everything done. Um, I'm pretty sure my surgery is actually at 10.30. Um, yeah, so then what they'll do is they'll knock me out with the general anaesthetic um, and they'll put a breathing tube in through my throat. I think that's the only thing that's really freaking me out is the fact that I won't be breathing myself. They'll have a machine doing it for me. Um, and yeah, then they're gonna make a few incisions. You're right, babe. It's fine. <laughs> This handsome man. Um, yeah, so they're going to make a few incisions, chuck a scope in there, have a look. If they find anything, they'll either burn it or cut it out. Um, usually they'll burn it. Um, and I know they're going to put, they have to pump your stomach full of like gas so it separates everything so they can have a clear view around and I'm, I've heard that's the sorest part of it. Like you wake up and some people can't lift anything for a while because they put the tube through your shoulder. Not really sure how it works. I'm sure I'll explain it better after the procedure. 
or maybe I'll get Josh to do it because I'll be a bit wasted. Um, but also while I'm under, they are putting in this thing. It's the marina. Um, I don't know if you can see. Are you going to focus? And it looks like that in the box. Ugh. But basically what that is, is it's like a birth control rod. Um, they're going to put it inside of me while I'm asleep. Um, it's called the marina, but they're sticking it up there to help um, control any of the symptoms. Um, I don't know, something about the chemical that's in it that, you know, can kind of help with any of that sort of thing. But since I don't bleed, I don't know if it's actually going to do anything. It will pretty much be the same as the injection that I'm on now. Um, but that lasts for five years, so you don't have to worry about getting your jabs every month or remembering a pill every day. Um, and if you wanted to get pregnant before then, you just go into the doctor and get that out. But that's definitely staying up there for five years. Um, <laughs> Josh thought that was funny. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if I have anything else to add to that, do I? Yeah, I think that's about it. Um, the next time you see me will probably be this afternoon, and I will be a bit out to it. With the general anesthetic, you're not allowed to operate. Um, like in your vehicles or you're not allowed to cook, you're not even allowed to friggin boil the jug by yourself or make any dramatic decisions or anything like that because your senses are all impaired so I think Josh is going to take today and tomorrow off to help me out I'm not even sure if I'll be able to walk but <laughs> we'll see so he'll probably be manning the camera and I'll be dopely talking to you so I'll see you guys soon with some cuts in my belly. Loki. Out. Hey guys, um, <clears throat> I just got home from surgery. Yay. Um, I don't think the doc. I didn't speak to the doctor, so I don't really know if they found anything or not. Um. Excuse my croggy voice. They put a breathing device in my throat. And then because I get the reflux, they had to put like a clamp on it so nothing come back up. Um, basically, I'm feeling pretty groggy. Um, a bit yucky. And sore. But that's alright. I'll come right. Um, got my little thing from my drip and I'll show you my tummy if you want to see it it's pretty yucky so you can skip this if you want to so it's all jelly they made a cut here in my hip and one in my belly button um, so I, I won't know um, what's actually going on for another six to eight weeks when I have my what's it? Is it? Consultation. Oh, consultation. Um but yeah, I think I'm just gonna have a bit of a rest. I'm gonna have a bit of a rest. Um Josh is looking after me, so I'll probably talk to you guys tomorrow when I'm feeling a little more alert. But um I just thought I'd let you know that I'm awake and they didn't harvest any of my organs, which is a bonus. So, I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> hey guys. <clears throat> Sorry, I still say I have a sore throat. Um, it's day two after the operation and I can't get out of bed by myself yet. Um, Josh has been helping me get up and go to the toilet and that kind of stuff. 
but that's basically just because I feel a bit bruised. Um, sorry, there's a big ass freaking hornet in here right now. Ugh. Um, and my throat's still sore, and the uh, painkillers that they gave me yesterday have obviously worn off. Um, so I'm feeling a lot more tender today than I did yesterday. But, yeah, I'll get there. Just hanging out. Um, yeah, I've just been staying in bed all day and watching movies. But I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm by myself tomorrow, so I kind of have to get out of bed by myself by tomorrow. So I think I'll practice that later. But yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, um, it's Wednesday. <laughs> I almost forgot to do this vlog. Um, I'm upright. In my pajamas. <laughs> um, I'm feeling better today. I still have a sore throat and I'm a bit tender. But I mean, that's ex that's to be expected, right? Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm feeling alright today. Um, I'm really tired from being up and about but you know I did that to myself but yeah day three much better I can get up and pee by myself which is a bonus but yeah I'll see you tomorrow and I'll probably be doing cartwheels hey guys day four um my throat's feeling a lot better today it just kind of feels like I have a cold which I probably have um yeah I'm, I'm actually feeling pretty good. I managed to put on some normal sort of people clothes. I got track pants on. I even put a bra on. So, woo, stepping up in the world. Anyway, um, I think I'll probably just end this whole vlog thing here because I'm upright and I'm going to all up by myself and it's, yeah, basically just I don't know how to describe it. it. It pretty much just feels like excessive period cramps, like worse than your worst period cramp. It's it's painful and uncomfortable, but you know I feel like I can kind of get on with life now. Um, I'll show you my my stomach. It's still really bloated. Um, I don't know if it's bloated or swollen. There's probably still gas in there, but um. There's my sexy belly button and oh, my hip there. Yeah. So that's pretty much that. Um, yeah, I hope you liked this video. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below. Um, I, I still don't know if they found anything or not. I have to wait for my six week appointment. Um, so yeah, they pretty much, oh, my arm's getting tired. They pretty much woke me up, um, gave me some painkillers and told me to go home. Uh, so I have no idea what actually happened during the surgery. Um, all I know is they cut me open and bit me up. <laughs> my insides are, are, are still quite battered and bruised. But yeah, so I, Honestly, I couldn't give you an update as to whether they actually found anything or not, but um, yeah, who knows? Um, I'm feeling all right. I'm, we're going to we're going out tonight. Well, sort of. Going to do some grocery shopping and go to obedience class for Loki because he's he's been a little butthole. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much onwards and upwards from here. I'm going back to work next week as well so that'll be good and then I think it's like two weeks after surgery um, you can kind of get back into the swing of things we're gonna start up insanity workouts so I can get some ripped abs but I have to wait till all that glue dissolves out of my stomach which is really gross but yeah thanks for watching um, any questions ask them down below and I'll reply to them Thank you. Bye-bye.